Ah, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, also known as the MCU. Welcome to me nerding out. Today we will be looking at WandaVision and trying to find original vintage patterns to go with her costumes in episodes one through three. Hi folks, my name is Stephanie Canada. In case this is your first time on my channel, yes indeed, that's my last name. And no, I don't live there. Ah, the MCU. I've long wanted to create some type of costume to go along with it, but I am always nervous that it will look terribly costumey. Sort of like this did that I made with my mother when I was like 18. Now I can probably hear you on the other side going, um, Stephanie, there's this thing called Captain America. Doesn't that fall directly into your niche of the 1940s? Why, yes, yes it does. It just never was quite my silhouette. So when I saw the very first WandaVision of her in this gorgeous fit and flair with a little bow accent, my draw went to the floor and I was excited. <laughs> And then I realized I am in no position to be giving you any type of advice for historical accuracy from this because it's all made up. Now, that's not to say that the time periods they are setting this in are made up. I am very well aware that the 1950s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s all happened. However, it's inside the comic book universe, so of course they're going to have more liberties than they would if it was actually recreating a real person. However, I was able to find a couple of patterns to get you closer to the correct line that was created in WandaVision. One thing to note while we go through this is that I am going to be doing my absolute best to find patterns from the periods in which each episode was set. This will help create the correct lines for each era that we're looking at in the show. So let's go ahead and dive right in, cause I don't have coffee today. Episode one, film before a live studio audience. No, not this YouTube video. That would be the name of the episode. <laughs> Episode one was loosely based off of I Love Lucy and the Dick Van Dyke style, which would put it into the time period from 1951 to 1966. Now in this episode, in the very first shots that we see, we see Wanda in her very gorgeous, very 1950s wedding gown. So the details in Wanda's wedding gown that we're gonna be looking for are a gathered underbust very gently, that fitted drop waist, and a very full gathered skirt, along with a high neckline with a boat neck cut. Now, while I couldn't exactly find an exact duplicate in a quote, wedding gown pattern, I have been able to find a wedding gown with a gorgeous drop waist that has very similar lines and a normal day dress that sort of has a similar lines, but doesn't have the drop waist. And to that end, Butterick 7618 comes very close. Now this pattern is almost spot on. The main difference being is that the bodice is in one fell swoop along with a really long, like, princess line dart that drops the waist down to just above the hip level, as opposed to that fitted section in the middle that Wanda's gown is shown in the very first shot. But it does have the appropriate neckline and sleeveless style. However, this butter pattern is a little on the hard to find sign. So another option is going to be Simplicity 2093. Now with this one, what we're seeing is you have that fitted waist, you have the gathered underbust, and you have the gathered skirt. However, it's keeping everything at the natural waistline. And while this doesn't have the correct neckline per se, it would be very easy to just take the one that has the collar fitting and adjust it to having that boat neck with the sleeveless look. So you get the feel for the gown without necessarily the extra drop waist feature. By the way, if you have any patterns that would fit into this category of each type of dress, maybe that I haven't found, please do let me know. While I have looked at the vintage pattern wiki, my website, and just generally picking my friend's brains, we can't possibly know all of the possible options out there. So if you have a pattern that is spot on or really, really close to one of these, please do feel free to leave it down in the comments so that everyone can hopefully go and find them should they choose. I will also be including a list of all of the patterns that I find here down below and any links if they are available for purchase at the time. Now, the next thing that we see Wanda in is going to be this lovely shirtwaist dress. I know what you're thinking. Stephanie, this isn't really that exciting. It's just a shirtwaist dress from the 1950s. Why are you wasting your time on this? Because it's really extra in the smallest of details. That's why. So what we're looking at here, as far as the collar goes, it looks like it has that fake notched section, although it's actually just the fold out of the front piece and the, where the collar is attached here. However, it's still very cute because they opt to do one of the other similar styles of collar in the era which is the rounded version. And they use that as a trim base to kind of give it this weird effect. 
Is it the rounded version? Is it the square version? You have to, like, peel yourself away from the television once you're done glaring at it to figure it out. And from what I can tell from my television, it does look like there's only one extra long dart at the bust. Now I'm going to preface this right now. You probably are not going to find a pattern with that level of pointed factor all the way to the apex of the bust. Why? Because normally you don't actually want your dart to go to the apex. You want to leave it about an inch to two away, depending on the fullness of your bust and what type of bra you're wearing. So, unless you're really going for the extra pointy factor, d don't expect to find a pattern like that because that actually, no, no, that you won't find that. However, what you will find are things like this. First up, we have Simplicity 2580. And while it has the correct rounded collar neckline, which is the style of trim you see on her dress, However, what it's lacking is it only has a one very shallow dart and the waist isn't nearly as fitted as Wanda's is. This could easily be rectified by adding an extra dart right at the waist. However, if you want a more blousey feel, then this would be the one for you. And actually, from what I can tell, it looks like Wanda's skirt is actually softly pleated and not gathered. So this one wouldn't be exactly correct because this actually has the gathered skirt as opposed to the soft pleats. It would be an easy fix though. The other thing to note about this pattern is that it doesn't have the correct cuff. But from what I can tell on hers, it looks like there's just a flat cuff or it could possibly just be a turned up cuff with an extra trim at the top. It's really hard to tell. But if you were to add the cuff to the short sleeve version, you'd have a pretty close version. Now this next one is actually, I do believe the closest that I found to her actual dress. This is going to be Simplicity 3047. And what we see here is the correct sort of pointed collar with the fold out, three buttons along the top, and it does have the short sleeve with the flat cuff, which is excellent because all you'd have to do at that point is then add that extra little thin trim around the side and the curved trim to the neckline to be able to create her dress. Bonus, it also has the soft pleats instead of the gathers. And it also has the correct bust dart along the side. But again, as far as when you get to the waist, it's not going to be as fitted. So if you want that, you'd probably have to take it in along the sides to get it to lay correctly, just like hers does in the show. The last option, which I actually think would provide you the fit style of Wanda's, but not necessarily exactly correct, is going to be Vogue 5121. You can see here it has the same type of pointed collar. But however, they added the waist dart this time as opposed to just having the bust dart. So you're gonna get that extra fitted look, which is how hers look in the show. This one looks like it has slightly sharper pleats, but if you were to pick up this pattern, you could also make a sheath dress style as well as have all these different necklines. So actually, as far as like bang for your buck, this is gonna be one of the better patterns if you're looking to have one that works for WandaVision, but also works for just general wear. And now we move on to the most striking costume of episode one, which is the peignoir. Because I'm sorry, wedding gown, you were gorgeous. However, that thing is amazing. Now I am gonna say that they did take some liberties, let's just call it. While peignoir nightgown sets were absolutely common, not only in patterns, but in everyday life, one that is like this is not commonly found. Okay, it's not. You might have seen this type of peignoir on a movie set, or maybe there's one from like a super high-end retail in the 1950s. However, for everyday use, this is absolutely not the peignoir set that you would see. Butterick 6997 is a much better example of what you would see commonplace in 1950s patterns. In this, you can see our peignoir has a yoked neckline, short sleeves or long sleeves. Now the tie in front was very common. However, it would go all the way up to the top of your neck so as to provide some modesty in case you were having to answer the door in your nightgown and you couldn't be seen. I mean, it's fine. I don't like to be seen in my nightgown either, but my nightgown is definitely not these type of nightgowns. I'm not that extra. However, what you can do is find more 1950s peignoirs and adapt them to being more screen accurate. In this case, I would say start with Advanced 5981. Now, while this version is a raglan sleeve as opposed to a set-in sleeve like you see on hers, you could at least adjust the front to having more of a drape, less buttons, and maybe folding it in to create that more of a deep V neckline. Would it be perfect? No, but it would be closer. And then once she scuttles back into the kitchen, switches over to the other dress, which is the lovely bow neckline, uh, we have a whole other set of issues because that is a very hard pattern to find. It's a very sweet dress with a very open neckline, the rolled sort of 
collar into a bow situation. It does look like the collar actually drops down because you can see a little dress underneath the collar as well. So it looks like the collar, instead of just stopping here and adding a bow, the collar goes all the way down and then you tie it to form the bow, which would be a giant pain in the ass to do. Yes, you could just tack it down and be fine. Now, when I first saw this dress and started digging through my archives to try and find something similar, uh, of course, the very first thing that I come across is the cute little pattern that I made my daughter's school dress from in this video right here. An advanced made a companion pattern number 7965 to go with the pattern that I had made previously. Now, funnily enough, there actually is a video from Kira Lee Cosplay where she actually makes something vaguely similar to my daughter's dress for her WandaVision dress. But she used Butter 7748 for her version. If you'd like to watch that version, I'll go ahead and link it down below. I know there's a couple other creators that have done WandaVision cosplays as well, and I'll do my best to find them and link them. Now, another option for this dress is going to be Simplicity 3872. Now, y'all, I got really excited when I found this pattern because I was thinking, this is perfect. This is literally what I'm looking for. Everything is there. It's all correct. Nope. No, 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 it's not. That lovely collar bow situation. It's a blouse. It's a blouse that goes underneath the jumper. <sighs> so close. However, because there is this pattern, you actually could take that entire collar situation off of the blouse and add it to any type of scoop neck dress. It also is, it's slightly incorrect in other ways as well, but what I was really looking for was the collar bow situation because changing out a gathered skirt to a circle skirt, not the end of the world. It has the really deep waist darts, which gives the feel of those princess lines, which is what I think that dress has. It's a little hard to tell if the seaming goes all the way up and over the bust or if it just sort of stops in dart formation. But this was so close and I was so excited and then it was, it was a blouse. Episode two, don't touch that dial. No, seriously, don't click away yet. I got more coming. I had to do it, sorry. So what we see in episode two is an I dream of genie meets bewitched level of 1960s shenanigans and magic. Now her primary outfit in this one is going to be a sort of either clam digger or pedal pusher, it's a little hard to tell, cigarette pant, as well as a fitted blouse and a bolero. And when I tell you that that bolero pulled me out of this faster than I could blink, uh, you'll have to ask my husband how hard he had to hold me to the couch going, that bolero is wrong, because uh, it is. It's very modern. But that's neither here nor there. Again, Marvel Cinematic Universe must give them liberties, even though I didn't when I was watching the show. It's fine. Now, as far as patterns for these go, it's not terribly hard to find something similar to each of these items. You aren't normally going to find them together into one pattern. However, you can amalgamate them from about two to three patterns if you're crafty about it. Now for the pants, you have a couple options. You can either go with Vogue 3011, which has a proportioned set, so you could adjust it for short, medium, tall, and all types of length of pant, which is always very useful in just general wardrobe. Then you have Simplicity 4098, which has the correct pants and a bolero that you can modify. Now for the blouse, it's a little hard to figure out exactly what's going on with the darting and the neckline because, well, she wears the little bolero basically the entire time. I think the entire time, actually. So I'm going to assume there is some type of dart toward the bust and it does look fitted along her waistline. So we're gonna just assume that it's a fitted blouse as opposed to a more billowy one. But I'm gonna give you a couple options in case you don't want the super tight fitting. The first option is going to be mail order 9353, which I think actually has a square neckline and I think hers is actually a rounded one. But if you wanted something that's similar in the body shape, but not so particular about the neckline, this could be your option. Another option is going to be Butterick 33. 318 or Simplicity 4935. All of these will give you the same general look. Now the bolero. Now I'm not here to say that there may not have been outliers and that this bolero might not have existed in some corner of the planet during the 1960s. However, if you're looking for a pattern of a sewn bolero, this is not the line you're going to get. You are not going to see the scoop style nearly as often. Now, could it be in a knitting book somewhere that I just haven't looked at? Absolutely, I don't normally look for knitting material because I can't, I don't know, I don't know what that is. Oh, I know, I know what it is. I just can't do it. I'm just gonna say as far as a sewing pattern goes, 
you're going to either get a collarless option that has more of a squared front and kind of a boxy feel, or you can get the rounded edge. However, it's normally going to come with some type of collar and a button closer to the neck. Examples of the ones that are collarless are going to be Mail Order 3157 and Vogue 5103. And the example of the more rounded style is going to be Advanced 7905, which I personally enjoy, but it's definitely not the bolero that she was wearing. So just throwing that out there. Now let's talk about that magician's outfit. While I've seen an adult fitted leotard from Maharam once before, I've never seen a pattern similar to her magician's assistant outfit in its entirety. I've seen kid versions, but they're always like pants and button ups and very practical and cover a lot of the body, which her costume does not. Now, I did some research and realized that this is actually totally period appropriate. There just aren't patterns for it, which isn't terribly surprising because I can't imagine the home sewist being like, yes, I would like to make a vaguely burlesque outfit. Although actually I, I think that would be kind of fun, but they didn't do that. So there's that. But what I am thinking you could do is you could probably start looking for things like a 1970s swimwear outfit and then bedazzle the crap out of it. One of the best ones I saw is going to be Stretch and Sew's 1300, which comes pretty daggone close to her exact costume, except you definitely would need to add structure somehow under there or just wear a long line bra underneath it to help it sort of form to the way you would like it to, or maybe just stitch it onto a long line bra. That could also work. The other option is you could f try and find like a bodysuit from the 70s that already has like the stitching lines sort of figured out and then just adjust the top. One of the best examples of that is going to be Butterick 5813, where you'd basically just have to like notch it down and add straps instead of the full like faux shirt situation going on. Episode three, now in color. Now this episode took a lot of its influence from the Brady Bunch centered strongly in the 1970s. Mmm, I can smell the poly double knit. Now, I'm not gonna go too deep into this episode because, well, it's 70s and I'm, I'm not a giant fan of the 70s. However, there are definitely two outfits to note in this one. First up, can we talk about Monica Rambo for just a second? Because, whoa. There's a fabulous cosplayer Kazuki Cosplay, who did an amazing recreation already, and all of her information will be linked down in the description box below. And for Monica's outfit, you're looking for a scoop neck button front vest with princess seams that has a top stitch, a button front shirt with pointed collar. It has long sleeves, cuffs, and gathers at the top. And bell-bottom high-waisted pants. And there are patterns that can help you reproduce it. The ones that I could find easily are going to be Simplicity 8345. Yes, friends, that scoop neckline is a thing. The only thing you'd really have to change in this one is you'd have to turn it from a double-breasted button front to more of the vest where she had, she did have double buttons right along here, but it then splits out from that connection. So you'd basically just have to fold it in more, but it already has the neckline for you. So winning. And then to create the rest of her blouse and pants, you would want to look for something similar, or the exact one, of Mail Order 4860. It's almost 100% correct. I think maybe her sleeves might have had a slight more gather along the top, but it definitely has the right feel, and it also has the awesome pants to go along with it. Now, are there other high-waisted pants and standard blouses? Absolutely. This is just one of the options, and it just seemed the most appropriate. You also could take this vest and open it up into a scoop neckline instead of the straight neckline. And then you'd have basically her entire costume in one pattern. Winning. And the final costume that we're gonna find today is going to be the amazing 1970s deep V dress that you see Wanda in for most of the episode. Now, while her dress actually just has like that deep V and then has a slit to allow for the pregnant belly, and you can actually see the underdress on that sometimes, I'm not really gonna look for that portion of it because I'm assuming that a majority of folks that are watching this aren't necessarily pregnant, but they would still like to have the line of it. And that can be accomplished by McCall's 2669. The main differences between this pattern and hers is actually this one has the gathered sleeve and you actually need to basically make the straight cuff sleeve longer to create her look. 
And I think that's where we're going to be leaving this off today. While the 80s, 90s, and aughts episodes were definitely, well, interesting, uh, the patterns for those are pretty readily available, because mom jeans, vests, and high neck turtle neck situations, and it, it, there wasn't anything in there that was terribly exciting. If you enjoyed this dive into WandaVision and finding sewing patterns for her costumes, do please let me know down in the comments if there are any other shows that you'd like me to do. Because while I enjoy this series and I enjoy digging through and going, no, there's not a seam there, and ooh, there's a seam there, and what is happening there? I understand that this may not be the type of content you want, but if it is, let a girl know down in the comments. And if you did enjoy this content today, please do make sure that you smash that like button, being sure to click subscribe, and hitting the bell notification so that you too can be notified when I'm posting a new video. And on that note, stay beautiful, friends. We'll see y'all next time. It's still echoey in here. Mm. Now I'm not gonna give anything away. However, if you didn't know Wanda was magical, have you watched the other movies yet? If not, you should. That wasn't a spoiler. I went for a run, I don't know who I am. It's fine. Wanda's wedding gown, Wanda's wedding gown, Wanda's wedding gown. Why is that so hard to say? Because when in doubt, put feathers on it. Oh my lord, I watch far too much YouTube. One of the best ones I saw is going to be Stretch and Show. <laughs> Stre Don't know where I'm gonna put that. Oh god. I hope it was recording. What?